Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode. This is episode number 85 and we start today's episode by once again putting a new bid here for Nicholas Saul, the Hoffenheim centre back who've rejected us twice already as we go in pursuit of the 6 foot 5, 24 year old. Now Saul of course is still a target for me and in the last episode we signed Jonathan Tarr. I asked you guys at the start of the episode as well who you think we should sign and some of you guys still said try and sign Nicholas Saul on a pre-contract as he'll still be available uh, available available but I still believe we can get Nicholas Saul for around his valuation or possibly a little bit under that I put in a 20 million pound deal plus Ben Bender who's 30 years old has been okay this season but is starting to decline in stats Hoffenheim once again said no though so I was like oh for goodness sake and then Dembele got put on the transfer list as well as I've not offered him a new contract yet but a bit did come in for Sven Bender funny enough and I've said this before but whenever I include a player in a swap deal. Pretty much straight away to get a transfer offer and Spurs put in a bid for Bender who is on the transfer list right now. 83 overall yes but 30 years old and declining in stats. Spurs put in a bid. We asked for £16 million, a little over his valuation and we shall wait and see what Pochettino says as I then put in a valuation bid for Hoffenheim's Nicholas Saul. They've rejected three bids already, hopefully not a fourth one at £29.5 million. And then as the January transfer deadline day came round as well, we had two emails in the inbox waiting for us. One was seeing Hoffenheim accepted that valuation bid for Saul and the other was that Spurs would meet £16 million for Sven Bender and he is off to White Hart Lane. So Hoffenheim accepts our valuation bid then for Saul. It's kind of frustrating we couldn't get him under valuation like we did with Jonathan Tarr in the last episode and I've said this so many times before but bartering with clubs in career mode I know it makes me out to be a bit of a cheapskate but it's the thing I'll always do because you know you can convince a club to uh, accept a valuation or load of valuation especially this year uh, deal for their players when their contracts are coming to the end of the year. Yeah. Sadly, it didn't work out with Saul, but we're still taking the valuation at £29.5 million because we know that Sven Bender is going to go. If Bender was going to stay, we'd forget about Nicholas Saul completely, but now he's going to go. I want another new centre-back, and now we'll have two more coming in to join Henry de Hoover Davis as part of our new back three. But uh, still, we also put a bid for Michel Weiser as well, another player out of contract in the summer. Uh, Sven Bender there does go to, uh, to uh, Spurs for £16 million, but unfortunately, Herder Berlin did reject our initial bid for Michel Weiser, which was just £10 million. Pounds. But Nicholas Saul did accept his contract though, so Sven Bender is off to London and Saul is off to the Signal Aduna Park for £29.5 million. Pounds. It turns out it is a little over his valuation because as you'll see right now, his valuation has dropped to £26 million. Pounds. So we spend £3.5 million over his true valuation, but you know what? I don't really care. 99 strength is what I'm looking at. Some absolutely fantastic defensive stats as well. And at just 24 years old, I'm totally fine paying a little bit extra extra than what I plan to pay. So Saul comes in and again I'll certainly take it especially with Sven Bender going to Spurs for £16 million. So Saul is in, Tar is in and hopefully as well we'll get this guy in as well. A new bid for Michel Weiser of £15 million but once again Herder Berlin came to him and said you know what he's out of contract in the summer but we are not letting him go right now in January. He's going absolutely nowhere so I said you know what fine that's fair enough with me. I'll go ahead and sign him on a pre-contract. So you know the thing is I, I talk about pre-contracts a lot and I talk about how easier it is to sign players on a less than valuation deal or a valuation deal this year when their contracts are come the end of the year. I've had so much success with it, especially in this series already. You saw with Tara a moment ago in, in the last episode and obviously last season with Middlesbrough, we signed three or four players like that. Salah, Bongonda. You know, there are some clubs, unfortunately, that just won't do that. You know, there are some clubs that simply put, will not let their players go on valuation deals or less than valuation, even with their contracts up in the summer. And clearly one of those clubs is Herder Berlin for Michel advisor. They flat out rejects me twice, so I said fine, we'll sign on a pre-contract, that's exactly what we do, and we also go ahead and sign this guy as well, Henrique Manuel Pinto Mora Guedes, who I'll call Enrique. And uh, he's going to sign for us, so delighted with that on a, uh, a free transfer there. And also Michel Weiser is going to come in next season on a 45 grand a week deal. We didn't really need him, as you don't use right backs, but he can play further forward. And he's got four-star skills and four-star weak foot as well. But this guy comes in now, that is Enrique. It's a free transfer. The only reason I'm signing this guy is simply put, because I just thought we might need some cover in the centre-back area, because we do play a free at the back, and I want to keep it that way. And he looks all right, 73 overall, 20 years old, low, low work rates, yes, but not too bad defensive stats, and he shows great potential as well. So the man with about five names is going to come in, and I'm totally fine with that signing on a free transfer. And also, another player is going to join us on a pre-contract. Again, I read the comments from this morning's episode. Lots of you guys were saying you need 
someone to replace Marco Royce. He's decreasing in stats. I know he's your captain, but you'll need someone long term. Well, how about this guy coming in on a pre contract? Stefan El Sharawi, the Italian left winger, currently playing for Roma as a big came in for Dembele here from Barcelona and we just said get lost. So, uh, Stefano Chirag is going to come in next season on a pre-contract. Absolutely fantastic signing and I haven't really abused pre-contracts in this series yet. No big names. I did it last year with uh, Watford and Milan and signed Neymar for Watford if you remember correctly but not this year. They haven't really done it too much but El Chirag is available on a free and I thought Do you know what he'll be the perfect long-term replacement for the skipper Marco Roy. So El Shirawi next season will sign on a free transfer. That's an absolute bargain. Michel Weiser is going to come in as well. He'll be a handy squad player for us despite the fact we don't play with fullbacks right now, but he can play further forward as I mentioned a moment ago there. And of course with the other three signers coming in as well, that free agent Portuguese centre half who actually looks okay there as a cover player. And then Jonathan Tarr and Nicholas Sul signing for around their valuations. i got to say, I'm very happy with what we did in the January transfer window. You know, I knew we were going to sign one or two players. I didn't know what areas to look for. Some of you guys said, why not get a striker? But I'll discuss that in just a moment's time. But i got to say, to sell Mark Bartra, to sell Sven Bender, and bring in those two quality centre-backs in Nicholas Sewell and Jonathan Tarr for £49.5 million, I think those two are great deals there. And I think in general, we did some great business in the January transfer window. So let me know in the comment section down below how you rate my business out of 10 in the window. I personally think we did really, really well. I, I I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't say it was amazing because we did overspend slightly on Nicholas Saul, but Jonathan Tyle was an absolute steal for us. Vizier and El Shirawi coming in next season on freeze, definitely going to take the latter. He is going to be absolutely fantastic for us on the left side as the long-term successor for Marco Royce. But I would say 8 out of 10. You know, I would say 8 out of 10. We spent almost a 50 million pounds. But we did sell two very good centre-backs as well, don't forget, in Bender going to uh, Spurs and also our, uh, Bartra going to our rivals by Munich. I'd say 7 or 8 out of 10, but I'm being biased towards myself here. And I'll say 8 out of 10 in the January transfer window. But let me know how you guys think I got on. But also, I will mention as well, a few of you guys did say, why not get a new striker? You've got a Bam Yang who's in red hot form. But he's also decreasing in stats too. Timo Werner, not too bad. And then you've got more on the bench, but uh, Ramos and Bobby Dia are currently retiring at the end of the year. Well, the reason I didn't go for a new striker in this window is quite simple. I'm totally fine with our duo up top right now, Werner and Aubameyang, who's in red-hot form as well. And I really like the look of Moore as well, who a lot of you guys have said I keep on saying Omre Moore, and it's actually Emre Moore. I do apologize for that. I'm not very good at pronouncing names. But uh, yeah, Emre Moore, I really do like the look of the guy. He scored two in his last three. He's been pretty decent coming off the bench whenever we've required him to come on and get a goal. He's not easy. Uh, normally done that for us. So I like the look of Moore. That's why I'm training him right now as well. And for Ramos and Bobadilla, because they're retiring, we can't sell them. And as uh, squad reserve strikers, they're good enough right now anyway as a fourth and fifth choice option if worse comes to worse. We've got an injury crisis or suspension crisis. So that's why I didn't look for a new striker in this transfer window. But next season in the summer, I will look for one or two new front men. But still, for the first and only game of the episode here, coming on the back of the January transfer deadline day, the window now now slam shut. We can only work with the players we currently got. And I tell you what, two of our players are on fire right now. One against the assist for the other who scores the goal. Aubameyang into Diego Menendez who gets his 12th goal in the Bundesliga as we take an early lead and go in front just eight minutes into this game away from home against Freiburg, a side currently threatened by relegation. The perfect start for us. And again, we talk about signing new strikers. When Aubameyang's on fire, when Diego's on fire and not to mention Werner and Moore also chipping over a few this season too. I don't think we need one right now. But Menendez isn't just scoring goals this season, he's also setting them up. Because directly from kickoff, Freiburg gave the ball away. We give it to Diego, who chips it over the top to Julian Weigel running through, which is quite a surprise for me. I didn't expect him to be storming forward and getting himself behind the defenders. Does well though. Great looping ball by Menendez. Weigel takes it on the chest, and I'll be honest here, I'm not entirely sure where the goalkeeper was going. In the words of Chris Smoove, give that guy a match. But either way, Weigel fires it in, and we go into a very early two-goal lead away at Freiburg. So 2-0 to Borussia Dortmund in the half, where there weren't too many chances other than those two. We were leading by two, and in the second half, we could have scored another goal as well, made it three. Mario Gutzer was played forward by Diego once again, looking for an assist, but unfortunately, Gutzer slammed the ball against the post, and it was still 2-0. And five minutes after the restart, yet another chance for Dortmund. Weigel inside towards Werner. Nice build-up here, because Timo goes in search of his first goal in 
quite some time. He's denied by a good save by the goalkeeper. And from the corner, Diego is into the middle, looks for Nicholas Saul, looking for a debut goal. And Schwallow makes a very unorthodox save there, but does turn the ball onto the roof of his net after the ball slammed off the turf. So still Freiburg nil, Borussia Dortmund 2, the home, uh, the home side's goalkeeper, keeping his side in the game as things stood. But to be honest, he may have been playing well for Freiburg, but his teammates were not. The other 10 outfield players on the pitch were absolutely awful. We kept on tearing them apart at will. Once again, another good build-up here. And again, it was Schwallow making a very good save to prevent us from going three goals up and putting the game beyond doubt. But with 18 minutes to go, though, there was another chance for us to get that third goal, the ever-elusive third goal that we were going to search for. Guerrero found Diego Menendez, who played it through towards Mikel Moreno off the bench, who took a touch and then found the back of the net with a brilliant finish across the goalkeeper, who, to be fair, despite conceding three in this game, had been playing very well. And Menendez got that second assist he was looking for, and Marino scores to make it free for Borussia Dortmund. Fantastic finish there by the Spaniard off the bench, and we win the game by three goals to nil. Oh, just one more chance, wasn't it? Yes, one more chance in the 89th minute. I was spoiled the ending now. Sorry about that. We won the game 3 0, but the final chance fell here just before stoppage time. Dembele into Diego, looking for a hat trick assist, but Julian Weigel looking for his second goal of the game was well denied by once again another good stop by the goalkeeper. So, final score Freiburg 0, Dortmund 3. You knew it was coming, and we get another really impressive win here on the back of that 3 1 victory over Kaiserslautern in the last episode. And look at these stats at full time as well. Freiburg did nothing other than pass the ball around, yet we still have more possession. 10 shots, 9 on target. A really, really great display, and we would have scored more had it not been for some good saves from the goalkeeper. But we are still top of the table. That's the most important thing, and hopefully, we'll stay there for the rest of the season too as we try and open up a five point gap on Bayer Leverkusen. But that will end today's episode of the Field 17 career mode, guys. So, a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please leave a like, as likes are, of course, much appreciated, and it really helps the channel grow as well. Much love to you all. Have a great evening, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.